Hi, this is David Hanna of Aspect Art. Today we're in the shop of uh, Kinibanan. He's going to tell us about uh, those beautiful oriental carpets, carpets that we've seen in paintings for hundreds of years, a little about the origin and uh, how they're made and where they come from. So join us now for Oriental Carpets with Kinibana. We're here today with Kinibanan, who is going to tell us a little about Oriental Carpets. Uh, first of all, the name Oriental Carpet is more like a generic term. Where do most of the rugs come from? Most of the rugs come from Iran because that is the biggest country uh, as regards amount of carpets produced. But carpets are produced in Turkey, in the Caucasus, in Iran, in Central Asia. And a lot of the modern production takes place in India and Pakistan. At the moment, the bulk of the carpets is coming from India and Pakistan. But if we are talking about real interesting historical carpets, they are mostly from Turkey, Iran and Central Asia. Now, when we speak of interesting historical kind of carpets, uh, what makes them interesting uh, and why are they different than the modern production? Uh, the carpets are interesting because they are an integral part of the way of life of the Oriental people. A carpet is interesting when you can see that it roots in the tradition of the makers. and. Uh, the West has always been intrigued by Oriental carpets because there was no equivalent of the Oriental carpet in the West. So the traders who went eastward and took uh, textiles home took also carpets to the West because they represented a form of wealth and luxury which was uh, unknown in the West. From uh, and this starts in the in the early times, 12th century, 13th century. You will see also that uh, many of the carpets are painted on early Italian uh, paintings. And then this is taken over by the so-called Dutch painters, which paint a lot of carpets on tables and in interior designs. When you say an integral part of uh, the society, I take it that these are tribal uh, symbols and, and the origin of the design. Yeah, the origin of design is very tribal. The whole idea of a carpet is a tribal thing. But in the courts, they took over the technique and they produce court carpets as well. So there are two distinct lines, the tribal carpet and the court carpet. And Iran is famous for its court carpets, and Turkey and the Caucasus and Central Asia is famous for its tribal carpets. But of course there are tribal carpets in Iran as well. So it is a mixture. The, the important is this division in two lines, tribal carpets uh, uh, contra uh, court carpets. Now when we speak of the tribal carpets themselves, what tribes are we speaking of in general? Uh, well, many tribes are known by name, but they are nomadic tribes which uh, travel with their uh, cattle, uh, mainly sheep, uh, through, uh, through the plains of C uh, Central Asia and uh, Iran. Uh, some of the names in Iran, you have the Kashkai tribes, the Afshari tribes, the Bakhtiari tribes. Very important in the northwest of Iran are the Sashiman tribes. And in Central Asia you have the Tekes, the Ersari, uh, the Beishiri, the Yomuts. Um, another tribe which is very well known nowadays are the Kurdish people. And uh, they still live in, in, a, in a tribal way uh, in certain parts. Now the design that we see in the tribal uh, carpets what does it symbolize, or what are, what are some of the uh, motifs that they use? Well, we, they will use motifs with uh, generally words of the evil eye, the evil eye which is in, uh, always all around them. And they will s uh, have symbols uh, symbolizing power. Uh, the, many of the symbols are from floral origin. 
and many of the meanings of the symbols are lost to us. But symbols are easily to be interpreted into your own way of thinking. So uh, to make it scientific is very difficult. Uh. Well, then we can move over to the uh, court carpets. Now, how do those differ from the tribal carpets? The main difference is that the tribal carpets are produced by the local people f uh, from their mind without any design. And they just sit down at their weaving equipment and start to weave the carpet. The court carpets are designed by a designer and there is a really well organized workshop where the designs are executed in a rather exact way. So the influence of the ones who execute the carpet is very little and in the tribal way of making the carpets the maker is also the designer in a way so there is a direct influence of the person who makes it Kenny Bannon, I, I, I think uh, when I've read some books that there are certain traditional designs uh, and motifs that are used could you explain uh, a little that uh, by using this rug you have now this carpet, for example, has the traditional design of a central medallion and four corners which are more or less the quarter of the medallion. As you can see the corner there, this consists of a quarter part of the medallion. And this is a design which is developed in the 17th century uh, at the court of Shah Abbas. And this is a design which continues still now. The basic principle, a medallion, with quarters of the medallion in the corner. And the, the whole field design is filled up with all floral designs without any specific uh, symbolic meaning. Carpets are still precious and treasured today, not only by collectors, but for anyone who can afford them and finds them, as I do, both mysterious and beautiful. Yes, Eastern, but still such a unique part of the West. A certain uh, carpets uh, have been given names associated with the painters who painted them in their paintings, the Holbein, for example. Uh, What's the origin of this? Yes, the, some of the carpets have such specific designs that at a certain stage the carpet was not given the name of the place where it was made, but given the name of the painter who painted it on the Dutch paintings. So one of those names used is the Holbein for the Holbein carpet, and there is another one uh, which is derived from the name of Laurentius Lotto. Those are two distinct Turkish uh, carpets which are made in the surroundings of the town of Ushak. And the, today's historians won't use that name, but it is an easy way to have an idea what the design will be. So tell me please, uh, where your shop is located and uh, whether the general public uh, can just stop in and look. My shop is located in the main shopping street of Amsterdam, Heiligeweg. And people are, of course, always welcome because we are open to the public. Uh, buying an oriental carpet is such a specific thing that people do need a lot of information before they can make their decision. Uh, lots of problems are involved. Uh, will the carpet last its lifetime? Will it be worth its money? So before somebody is going to buy a carpet, I have to give a lot of information about the actual thing they are going to buy. And that's the purpose of our shop. Well, thank you very much for talking about Oriental Carpets with us today. Thank you.